Folks, sometimes I, uh, I answer questions and people don't listen to my advice, which is perfectly fine, but they do reach out to me asking for advice. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe this case was uh, something that I'm just missing the mark on, but that's kind of part of the deal too, right? Is that everybody has different priorities, but I can't understand this guy's priorities. <laughs> I guess that's where I'm getting from or coming, coming from, but uh, let's read, let me read this email here and I'll tell you what I recommended to him. And, and, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing the mark here. I'm 63 years old. I've got 341 acres in South Carolina. 140 acres is being rented out for row co crops. The rest is timber, newly planted, or 20 plus years old. I took my old bones and had hand planted 27 and 14 acres by hand in 2021 and 2022. Hand planted 41 acres of trees. That is, that is, that is a colossal amount of work. Anyway, no use for a mower under the tractor. Just need something for a bush hog to cut between the trees I planted. And one of those things that go on the front to grab brush and cut it with a chainsaw. No need for a blade or a backhoe. I'm thinking 25 horsepower should do. Will not buy deer. Union labor involved, and that's a big no for me. I think coyote looks best, but any input you have is much appreciated. So I replied, and I said, man, that is an incredible amount of planning by hand. It really is. Um, I, I said, I don't have any 25 horsepower machines that fit your needs. Now, generally speaking, that is not how I do business. I don't, I don't recommend people start in rare cases, you need to have a certain amount of horsepower, but that's not how I start out trying to find the right tractor for somebody is saying you need 25 horsepower, you need 50 horsepower, you need 75 horsepower. What does that even mean? What are you correlating that with generally? So, you know, that's where I ask different questions. Um, you know, I, and I honestly, I said, that's, I said, I'm a little surprised that's as big as you want to go. Sounds like you have a lot of land to maintain and would benefit from a bigger machine. And so anyway, you're getting back and forth and it, so I actually have like an email response that I will send to folks oftentimes when they send me an email that has a lot of different items like requirements, you know, your budget, uh, the types of projects that you're doing, your elevation above sea level, like if you're in the mountains or if you're down right by the coast, whatever, for example, or if you have a lot of hills to deal with, a lot of questions like that to get a better feel for what they're looking to do. Um, I didn't do that in this gentleman's case, but essentially he said all he's looking to do is brush hog around the 27 and 14 acres that he planted, the 41 acres of trees that are, that are spaced out 10 feet apart. So nothing big. Um, he'd use the grapple just to cut up stuff that's fallen over and everything else. And, you know, I said, listen, you know, I mean, it's a lot of land to mow. All right. That's 41 acres is a lot of land to mow. And with a 25 horsepower tractor, that doesn't mean a lot, right? Because you can get a 25 horsepower tractor, for example, a John Deere 1025R, a John Deere 2025R, a John Deere 3025V. On the 1025R, I'd recommend a four foot brush hog. On the 2025R, I'd go four foot or five foot either way. On the 3025V, I'd recommend a five foot. Uh, you know, so now this being one of his primary jobs, I wouldn't say, hey, go get, he won't, he won't buy a John Deere, but I wouldn't say, hey, go get a 25 horsepower 3025V and put a 16 inch brush hog on there and call it good. Um, because that's kind of on the low end of the horsepower range for that size of a mower. I would, and so I told him, you know, he's, he's kind of locked in on horsepower. So I'd go with something more like a 30 horsepower tractor, a little bit bigger, not a lot, but a little bit bigger, a little bit more expensive, but it's going to efficiently run a 16 inch brush hog. And to me, that makes sense because he has 10 foot row spacing in between his trees. All right. And so a 60 inch brush hog, he's going to probably want to give himself three inches or so outside of those saplings. Right. So he doesn't smoke those. And so he's down to nine and a half foot. And so then he's got a little bit of overlap with the brush hog because I'm not perfect. I can't cut exactly five foot. I need to have a little overlap there to make sure I'm cutting everything. So one down and back pass with a five foot brush hog is going to clean up everything in between those two rows. If you get a four foot, then you're going to leave a decent chunk of material there that's uncut and likely have to do a third pass up and, and down each row. And that's a heck of a lot of time when you're talking about 41 acres of trees. I mean, a couple of years ago, we just did, uh, Chris and I, we did a video comparing a a uh, 48 inch brush hog to a 62 inch flail mower, for example, just out of our other property, just mowing a field. And I can still remember going up and down 
that 10 acre field like two or three times with the 48 inch brush hog and thinking like I would feel so defeated before I even started this job if I actually was going to mow this field with a 48 inch brush hog and that was just 10 acres. It would take so long to get that job done where it was, I mean, I wouldn't do it. Like it's it just, I didn't do it with that. I, did, I used a big 10 foot bat wing to mow. But uh, the point being is, is it, he doesn't care about that. <laughs> he just doesn't care. I, I pointed that out. I told him about that. And he's like, I don't, he's like, I got time on my side. And I'm like, okay. You know, um, I said, great. Then a 25 horsepower with a 48 will do. You know, as, as I said, it's not that it won't do the work. It's just that I don't think it's the right tool for the job. I mean, I think it's a, a, a little bit bigger tractor with that'll efficiently run that that 60 inch mower is the right way to go. But he's kind of dead set on a 25 and a 48, 25 horsepower and a 48 inch brush hog. So I don't know why he really reached out. To be perfectly honest with you. Um, Maybe just for validation. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. If I would have had something, I would have sold it to him because that's what he wanted, right? I'm not gonna not sell somebody something if that's what they want, but I am going to make sure that they know what my opinion is on the matter because I don't want anybody, whether it's a tractor or an attachment, to buy something from me and then, you know, complain to me later on or complain to other folks later on that I made a bad recommendation. So I take those recommendations very seriously. Uh, and so I don't know, maybe I'm just completely missing something here. It has no budget constraint either. There's no budget worries at all. It doesn't matter. It'd be a hundred thousand dollars. didn't matter to him. So there's no budget concern. He's obviously willing to spend time doing things. I mean, he planted all those, however many thousands of trees by hand on 40 acres. That is a ton of work. And I can appreciate the hard work for it, but I, I think at the end of the day, I would work a little smarter at the same time and, and make things more efficient. Um, because if you can do in between two rows of trees, you know, if it can take two passes instead of three passes to do that, then you're saving like 50% of your time, right? Uh, potentially to do that. So by, by eliminating one of those, those passes in between each row of trees. So anyway, um, what do you guys think? Is that, uh, is that the right way to go about that? Is there, is, did I miss the mark on that recommendation? I don't have more information from this guy other than that's the way that he wants to go. And um, I found that pretty interesting because 41 acres is a lot of land to mow with a four foot brush hog. It's something that I, I wouldn't do, especially if I had the option to buy something bigger. I mean, it, it, and to be, to be fair, if he had no budget, I was gonna throw out, you should go with something that can run a 10 foot mower or an eight foot mower or a nine foot mower. So you can go up and down each row one time and call it good. And uh, considering he has no budget concerns, but I could obviously tell this was not in the direction of what this guy wanted to do. It was more like <laughs> wanting to punish himself unnecessarily for some reason. And so anyway, I was not able to convince him. It doesn't sound like he's gonna go in, in the direction that he wants, but I s didn't let it sway my opinion. Anyway, folks, so that's just one of the, uh, the random emails that I get all the time from customers trying to help them make decisions. And at the end of the day, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I am gonna give recommendations based on dealing with this kind of stuff day in and day out for years and years and years, right? I have my own properties that I, that I work on regularly with all types of tractors and equipment, and I'm getting feedback from customers constantly, day in and day out on things that they bought for me and that work and things they wish they would have done differently or what they're planning to do. So, you know, all that information, a lot of it goes in here. Some of it does fall out somewhere too, but I retain a lot of it as well. So I, I'd love to help you out and make the best decision for your setup too. And we ship all over the country. So if you're looking for something for your tractor or if you need a tractor, go to goodworkstractors.com. We'd love to help you out. Shoot an email over if you need some help picking out the right tool for you. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.